So what we're going to do today is just talk about Universal Print. This is a new feature from Microsoft um, which enables us to onboard our printers effectively into Azure Active Directory. Uh, and from there we can then allocate those printers out to users, which is, is really quite neat. Effectively we are cloud enabling printers, so we, you know, we can enable to move away from on-premises file servers um, or maybe even some other print solutions. So when we look at this from a wider point of view of you know, moving devices towards Azure AD or using what Microsoft refers to as modern management. This is often a key piece of that one. So it's quite a nice um, tool from what I've seen so far. It's quite a nice service. So it, it is new, so I expect some improvements still. But initially, I wanted to draw you firstly to the documentation. There is quite a quite a good amount of documentation in there, as you can see. Um, so just it's worth taking a look at that beforehand, and you can see split up on the page we've got different sections so there's a bit of section about architecture which explains how that all works together you've got things like connectors uh, and then you've got some printers that will eventually at least come with universal print capability within that uh, but as you can see there's quite a lot of documentation there now the connector there's a link there to go download it we can build that connector uh, install it locally on the printer uh, sorry on, on locally on premises where the printer is installed and there's some instructions of how you go to onboard a printer and that's basically what I'm going to take you through in this session the you know the basic premise is that you install a connector local to the printer where it can see it either wirelessly or we've done it with wired as well so we install the printer uh, into that connector obviously we need to register the connector in Azure AD and then we can go ahead and present that printer out to users now I've set a little kind of demonstration up there just to have a first look at it but as I say it's worth checking through the documentation there's quite a lot of good stuff in there um, so yeah that's that's worth a look so what we're going to do is if we log into uh, the Azure portal what we'll see is that we've got a universal print blade in here just to be clear it is in the Azure portal it's not in maybe um, the mem admin portal the endpoint manager admin portal or anything like that it is a separate blade called universal print and what we can see if we go in here is you can just see this preview at this time at least we've got a few options not a huge amount printers printer shares connectors document conversion etc uh, and it's all over there as you need it and as I say what we need to do is go ahead and download one of those connectors and install that local to wherever the printer may be so if I jump into a virtual machine that I've got and this is in fact, this is a physical device local to the printer that I have installed. I'm not going to walk you through the click by click of installing the connector, but it's really, really simple, really light, dead, dead small. Um, once you've installed that, you need to register the connector with a name and that'll appear in your Azure portal. Really simple to do, as I say, I'm not going to walk through that at this point. But once you've managed to install that, you'll, uh, you'll have a utility installed that you can then open up and then go register the printers. We'll just fire that up you can see in that the connector that I made here is called Pete's Home Printer give that some kind of more appropriate name of course relevant to where that is maybe geographically located and then all we do is sign in with the uh, Azure AD credentials that have the relevant permissions to manage these printers now, there's a couple of roles added with the universal print um, worth going checking those out certainly in the case of me demo in this I'm, I'm running as some kind of admin but you're probably not going to do that in reality so if we log in there you can see it's fairly well laid out fairly simple i'm logged in with my credentials i've got my connector name there which i already pre-installed so really simple to do uh, we've got a button where we can go ahead and refresh printers if we look at the connectors in azure ad you'll see that connector is listed as i mentioned there you can see I've got a couple of others that I've been playing around with. It tells you the host name that it's installed on, what operating system that connector is, uh, is sat on, and so, so on and so forth. So if we go back to the connector, you can see the printer's in there. I've just, um, you know, if I want to find a printer, I can hit refresh, you know, whether it's Wi Fi or whether it's cable. This particular one is on the wireless network. So, and obviously that's a HP one. We've done this with a few brands so far, and it seems to work pretty well. If I select the printer and then go register, this takes not very long, maybe up to a minute. I have seen it actually fail once or twice, but 
and the next time I've tried it it's been perfectly fine. So we'll just let that do its thing and register. Shouldn't take very long and what we should see is that appear as a registered printer on the left hand side. There we go. So now that's registered. What we should see effectively uh, is that register against Azure AD. But note here we've got two buttons around collecting printer diagnostics and connector diagnostics which is really quite nice to see actually. So just to give you an example of what that looks like, if you hit collect printer diagnostics, you get this kind of information captured. So if you wanted to go do some troubleshooting, then you've got some diagnostics there. If you have a look in, you see the kind of things that you capture in these event logs and HTML files. And there's quite a lot of decent information. I'm not going to drill down to it in any detail, certainly in this session, um, but just be aware that that's there. And it's, it's the kind of thing I do like to see certainly in a preview um, where you're kind of messing about and playing with these things and getting a feel for what you kind of can't do so that's really cool now if we jump back into the Azure portal we should see hopefully that printer has registered now you can see the printer has appeared at the top and it's currently stopped now the printer is not active at the moment if I go in there I need to actually share that printer so although it's registered it doesn't mean that it's usable immediately you can say I can unregister it if you want to take that away again. It's fairly straightforward. You can just unregister and that'll take it out of Azure. And the connector will show that as well. Now if I go ahead and share this printer, you can see we've got a few options on what we can and can't name it. Um, but I'm just going to name this something really straightforward. And what we can do is once we've named the printer, you can see you know, what characters you can and can't use. Just be aware of that one. We've got options here and certainly when you know when I first started using this this wasn't available it's evolving just even in preview we've got an option there to allow access to everyone in the organization or you can go ahead and pick individuals so if I slide that across share the printer and that'll enable it for everyone to be able to use within my organization it's probably worth mentioning there is a license associated as well with universal print certainly in this uh, this environment I've got it allocated to everyone so that they can use Universal Print as, a, uh, as an option. You can see the kind of information that you've got there. It's, uh, it's fairly substantial. And if I go into Access Control, you can see that reflects that I've just enabled that for everyone. And again, this was a change even from the very first time that I started doing this in preview. But if I refresh that, you should see the printer is now shared. And you can see the share name as well. If you go to Access Control, again, you'll see that it's there's a slider there to en enable it if you didn't do it first time, but if you slide that back, you can then enable users individually or you can enable groups, whichever obviously makes sense to you guys. Um, there we go, so if you disable that. It can be a little bit quirky, this new interface, so we'll see how we go, but just be aware you can do it as a broad, broad brush approach to everyone or you can uh, just be more specific around groups. Okay, let's jump out of here. Okay, so it does reflect, you see, that it was a little bit quirky in terms of the interface. If we jump back into Azure Active Directory, we should see that that printer now is registered actually appears in Azure AD as a printer. You can see it there, and the icon is a bit different, so that should catch your eye. But again, you can see if I just search on Pete, you'll see some of my devices along with a printer. So that's quite neat. Um, you can then obviously see that in with everything else as well. So you can do your reporting and such like if you wish to do that. So yeah, just be aware that that do, does register it, or should I say join it. Now, what I've got here is a virtual machine that's joined to Azure Active Directory. Now you can use this with Azure Active Directory and you can use this with a hybrid joint device because you've got a, a kind of element of that within Azure Active Directory. This one is purely Azure AD joined and I'm using a user that's obviously got access to that printer because I just enabled that printer for everyone. So if just give this a minute to log in. What I should be able to do is go into that virtual machine and then add the printer. Um, so it's really simple and really basic. As I say, when I've been using this, it's it works pretty well. It's fairly straightforward. It just works as you would want it to. I've not had any major challenges with it yet so far. 
as you can see you've added a few more the printer's stopped i need to go and do something with that printer turn it on wake it up whatever you see the other two that we've got in there are ready so we've added one for one of our offices and we've had a bit of play around with some home printers as well you see you've got other options available within universal print just while i wait for that machine to start i'll log in um, if you want to do any, some sort of extended capabilities around print support for client devices you can do that you've got a few reports built in which is quite neat as well now, there's only a couple there at the moment but you can see you've got printer usage and user usage and that'll give you the last 30 days usage per user uh, and group and the same with printer usage i'll just give you a quick look at what they look like just try and open that up and drag it across there you go so you can see if I just make that a little bit bigger and get rid of this there you go so you've just got a bit of information there around the, the report ID, the printer ID usage update uh, sorry usage dates even and so you can see the number of jobs and such like and maybe those reports will iterate a little bit further when this sort of matures a little bit more but you can see you've got the fundamentals there of what you might need to do a bit of reporting uh, but yeah just be aware that they're there for sure the user usage one as you probably would expect similar kind of information but that's based on user principle name so that might be a group that might be a user how many jobs that user completed uh, when it was done that kind of stuff so remember that's just 30 days history so just be aware of that one uh, and just be aware as well if you unregister your printer then it doesn't necessarily track history in that respect the printer has to be active okay so if i go back to the machine now you can see i've got a kind of pre-prepared word document just a basic word document that i sent to someone in the office to try and make me a drink um, unfortunately being a considerable number of miles away that didn't didn't happen so i'm adding that to my account as you as you do if i go and try and add a printer here now just go into printers this should be fairly straightforward and fairly familiar to most people i should imagine and what i should see is that i can then add that printer and because of the allocation of the printer or the assignment of the printer you see i've got a few more in there actually um, you can see they've got a little cloud icon associated with them so that's a nice way of differentiating if i go and add the printer hopefully it should bring back my hp printer that i just added there we go and you can see it's marked as a cloud printer so really straightforward to do just add the device there's no kind of messing around with drivers so far that i've seen um, it, it just pulls through the drivers from the cloud connector i'll just give that a minute to add So we've tried this so far against a couple of different brands we've got some hp we've got some brother we don't have a huge amount of printers in the organization i work for but it seems to work perfectly well so if i then go and hit print and then you'll see if i just scroll over that's a previous one that i had I need to clear that out this is the one that i've just added and just appears like a normal printer and prints in a completely normal way as far as the user is concerned then what we should see just get rid of this excel is if I go onto the printer and you can hand it that, that one is stopped you'll see it. if I look at jobs you can see the job is there and it's processing so if I go and do something to that printer it will it will print off as normal and as I say based on the, the, the sort of work that I've done with this so far it just works completely fine now if you go and lock in printer properties just for visibility you've got quite a few options in there gives you a bit of background about what kind of things it's using uh, location properties for example you've got lots of information that you can add in there uh, as much as makes sense to your organization so you can see there's lots of fields that you can populate if you wish to now you may use some of those you may use none of those um, obviously it depends and then you've got some more information around the printers you can change a few options around things like paper size uh, you can see there's all kinds of stuff in there so i'm not going to drill down into all of those but you've got options that you can have a little play with if you wish to uh yeah and it's it's relatively straightforward so the printer i mean i need to go downstairs and 
give that printer a little prod, but the print should just arrive as, as normal. Um, I've had no issues with that so far. And that is really all I wanted to cover in terms of the uh, the first look. So yeah, Universal Print, it's, it seems quite good so far. No major issues with that. I'm fairly impressed with it. Um, maybe some of the reporting will evolve a little bit uh, and we'll see what else they add into the, uh, the UI. But certainly for a first look, uh, it's quite good. So feel free, go have a look.